اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي 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 ممات محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق الإنسان مفطورا على النطق والتفكير الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وأشرف بريته سيدنا أحمد ونبينا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت المعصومين الهداة المهديين سيما بقية الله في الأراضين واللعن على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى يوم الدين إن شاء الله during the course that uh, we have and we start from now we are going to discuss logic and the main book that uh, we will focus our lessons on that is the logics which has been written by uh, the late Ayatollah Muzaffar. But uh, before we get into the, uh, the science itself, the science and knowledge itself, uh, I'm going to deliver a, an introduction uh, for you. Logic, which is the translation of the word mantiq, in Arabic is uh, and the word mantiq comes from this root nutq nun ta qaf nutq has two meanings I mean literally it means speech but it has two meanings and two forms or two types we can say uh, exterior and apparent meaning and type of nutq and uh, interior and inward one. The exterior one uh, is uh, in fact the ability of speech. I can speak, for example, I can speak English. I mean the words that, the voice that you are hearing now from me and I am producing them. This is the meaning of notq. I mean it's uh, exterior meaning or external meaning and apparent meaning of notq. I can talk. I can speak English, Persian, Arabic. So this is notq in its apparent meaning. But its uh, interior and inward meaning uh, means to percept, to percept, to understand something. To understand something in Arabic, they call it notq. So to understand and per percept general, the general and the universal things, the universal and general meanings, this is called uh, notre two. In other words, I mean, let me put it in other way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a human race with a speech as part of its essential nature. I mean, one part of me as a human, my nature is my notq, is my, I mean, that speech. And uh, he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, made human tongue a tool, as a tool by which I can speak. I mean, I have a tongue and I can uh, speak and deliver a speech. But uh, although we have this, uh, the human being needs something to erect his speech. To speak, I need something. I need kind of material. And beside that, I need something to give form to that. And beside that, I need something to uh, see whether uh, that's correct or not. Uh, something that will allow my words to conform the language which I know to the forms of its vocal expressions and its bases. Uh, this needs a guide, someone 
who helps me or something that helps me habituate me to the norms of that language to understand the norms of that language this is called i mean uh, we called them um, grammar and morphology i need morphology to make the words and materials and i need grammar or syntax to see whether the sentences that i am making are correct or not so i mean to help me do that i need syntax and I mean, grammar and morphology so this is in regard to that external and exterior meaning of notq but in a similar fashion allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has created human race with thinking as part of its essential nature and he has bestowed upon humankind a faculty of rational thinking but in spite of that uh, we find people commit a great number of mistakes in their thinkings they believe that for example they believe something as a cause while it is not a cause they believe something as a conclusion but it is not conclusion and uh, people believe that something is a proof but it's not a proof i mean they have mistakes in their thinkings so to make to keep to avoid to prevent my thinking from these mistakes from these errors i need something i need a tool and uh, a human being is always in need of something to correct his thoughts and guide him to the path of sound derivation and interference it has been mentioned by many that the science of logic is a tool by which the human being may immunize himself from errors and which will give human being a means for correcting their thoughts just as i told you about grammar and morphology that it helps me that to make correct words to make uh, uh, correct sentences i mean grammar morphology help me with that the same thing we have about logic when i am thinking to have a correct thinking i need what i need some rules i need something to help me with that and that thing that tool that instrument is logic so uh i mean this is very important i mean as a uh, an introduction to our uh, discussion here so logic that we are discussing is very very important why because it helps us to avoid from making mistakes in my thinking like morphology and syntax i mean uh, morphology and syntax that help me with uh, my speech my external speech my words to keep them from mistakes but there is a question here i mean maybe some questions uh, raised here and that is uh, look uh, human beings study logic here we are studying logic sometimes someone like me teaches logic but yet we see that they are making a lot of mistakes in their thinking so how is it possible i mean so there should be no benefit in logic if you study logic you will you will make mistake if you don't study logic you will make mistake there is no difference so what is the benefit of uh, reading and studying logics while uh, we have this mistake uh, this problem the answer is that that look brothers and sisters first of all we all know that i study li uh, language in, in high school or university or wherever I study language, I study grammar, I study morphology. But still, I make mistakes. 
So uh, is there anyone who says uh, the, 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 the syntax and uh, I mean, syntax, grammar, and uh, morphology doesn't, don't have any uh, benefit? I mean, the same answer that you give there, we have here about logics. This is the first. The second point that is uh, more important is that the mistakes that have been made are because of one of the following three points. I mean, the three points that I'll mention here. Yes, I am studying or teaching logics, but still I have yet, I have mistakes in my thinking. This is because of one of these three things. First, uh, I'm the person that is using, uh, uh, has studied this science, the science of logic. Uh, he is not, and he has not become sufficiently proficient in, the, in that science. Yes, I know logics. I am studying logics, but I'm not proficient in that. I'm not that professional. And it is not kind of faculty, it has not turned, it has not turned into a faculty or a, a habit for me. So whenever I'm going to think I should refer to the, to, to the book, to the logics book to understand whether uh, I am thinking correctly or not. This could be, I mean, the first reason. I mean, here, uh, uh, what uh, the late Muzaffar said in his book, he said that, Maybe that person that is studying logic has a making mistake in his thinking, still making mistake in his thinking. That's because he, the, the logic, the science, this knowledge has not become a malika for him or her. Has not become a malika. Malika means something that you do it a lot, you do it repeatedly and it becomes somehow as a habit for you. And this is the first answer, first point here. The second point, the second cause that maybe the person that is studying logics and knows logic make, makes uh, mistakes in his thinking is that maybe uh, I am prof proficient. I mean, logic uh, is, uh, I, I'm very professional in logics. I know a lot about it. I can use it. I have this ability. This is kind of malicky for me. But I'm heedless. I'm inconsiderate when I'm thinking. I, I don't think about those logical ways. I'm making an argument. For example, I'm making a, a Burhan. And in this Burhan, which needs two premises, I'm not thinking about this point that according to logics, there should be two premises, major, minor premise, uh, premise and uh, major premise. And for example, the major premise should be general, the minor premise should be, uh, should not be uh, general. And these things, I'm not thinking about uh, this. I just make a, an argument without thinking. I am proficient, yes, but I don't care about them now. I'm heedless about them. And that's the reason that I make mistake. This is the second reason. So. The second cause of making mistake is that I am proficient in logics, but I don't care now. I'm heedless now about it. I don't think about it now. This is the second cause. And the third cause that uh, we have here in the second answer is that sometimes a person knows logics, is proficient enough to use the logical rules and uh, does care about it, uh, thinking about it. But the problem is here that uh, he makes mistake in applying that rule. The, pr the problem in tatbiq of that rule, in application of that rule, to the case in question, to the case that he is studying. So I know logics, but I don't know. For example, I know that when I am making an, an argument, there should be two premises, for example, in one kind of uh, argument. And 
in the, the, the second, the major premise in that argument should be general. I know that, but I don't know whether, for example, kullu insan, all humans, is general or not, is universal or not. I cannot apply that rule here. And that's the problem. That's the mistake. So let's summarize this question and answer. What was the question? The question was that. Okay, you said that we study logic to keep us from making mistakes. We won't make mistakes in thinking. But we see that many of those who are studying logics, like me, like many students, they still make mistakes in their thinking and make errors. So what is the benefit of studying logics? So the first point was that we have the same question about syntax and morphology, about grammar and morphology, that although we are studying them, still we make a lot of mistakes in that uh, case. And the second answer was that the, the, the mistakes that those who study logics will make in future is because of one of these three. First, they are not proficient enough and logic is not a malake and habit for them. Second, although they are proficient enough and logic is a malake for them, but when they are thinking, they are inconsiderate, they are heedless of that, uh, of, of logic, of this uh, skill. And, the, th and the, the, the third point, the third cause is that making mistakes in applying, in application, in tatbir or in the recognition of the mistah or instance of rules. I mean, in this, uh, the, the problem uh, uh, caused, is caused uh, by one of these three things. But uh, let's go to the uh, second point. Okay, logic. You said some things about logic. This is uh, logic in general, and it, it helps us uh, to think well without any mistakes and problems but what does it mean what is it what what is its definition what is logics what is logics okay according to the popular idea among the logicians or uh, uh, scholars or logic theorists uh, we have this definition that is in arabic terms it it, it is it reads in this way آلتون قانونیتون تأصیم و مراعات و هذهنا عن الخطأ في الفکر It means that, maybe literally, a canonical tool which if one takes heed of this tool and observe it he will have his mind or his thinking immunized from error this is the definition of mantiq or logic. So here we have some words in this definition. Listen again. A canonical tool. A canonical tool. So here we have canon. We have tool. Two things. Which if one takes heed of this tool. If someone takes heed of this tool. Observes this tool. Then he will have his mind, his thinking, immunized from error. His thinking, his mind, immunized from error. So here we have four terms that we should talk about them in short. First, the first, uh, the first word that we should discuss about it is tool. Mantek or logic is a tool, is an instrument. Second, it is canonical. Third, if someone takes heed of that, observes the rules of that. And four, mind or thinking. But about the first one, mantiq or logic is a tool, is an instrument. What does it mean? Look, brothers and sisters, we have two types of sciences. One of them are, uh, I mean, according to Arabic uh, terms, one of them is called Asali, and the other is called Ali. So a science could be Asali, could be Ali. Literally, it means that 
A science could be genuine, could be uh, an ordinary and original one. And the second type of science is Ali or instrumental one. But what are the definitions of these two types of science? First, Al-Ulum al-Asali, I mean the, uh, the, the science that they are genuine, they themselves are important. The final goal is within the, 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 the science itself, not outside of that science. When you study medicine, you study it because of medicine, because of its subject. The subject of medicine is the body of human and his, his, his health. And this is a subject and goal. And they are in this, uh, in this ball, in one ball. It is not something out of that, uh, something out of this domain. This is, a, an, uh, this is among, this is uh, uh, counted among the Asali sciences, or fiqh, or jurisprudence, you study jurisprudence to understand the rulings of God. So here you uh, study, you read the rulings of God, and that is jurisprudence. The, the final goal is within itself. It is not kind of uh, preparatory uh, science or introductory science for other sciences. This itself, this jurisprudence, this faith itself is important, okay? So these are ulum al-asliya or ulum al-asali or genuine sciences or original sciences, whatever we are going to call them. The second type of sciences are al-ulum al-aliya. I mean, it refers to the word ala, which means tool, instrument, instrumental sciences. Means they themselves, per se, are not important. They, they, they are important because we need them as an introductory, as an introduction uh, for other sciences, for other things. For example, we study, we are going to speak. Okay, we are going to speak. So here the main thing is speech. But to, uh, to avoid making mistakes in our speech, we need to have some rules. We need to know some things before that. For example, we should know about the words. We should know about the forms of the words. We study them in another science, which is kind of preparatory science that precedes this thing. It is before this thing. Those are called the, the uh, ulum al-aliya or instrumental sciences. So nahv, syntax or grammar, and morphology, they are instrumental sciences for speech. Speech is the main goal, is the main thing, and these are kind of introduction for that, introduction to speech. These are al-ulum al For example, I mean another example about sciences, mathematics itself, mathematics has two branches, we can say in general, one of them, mathematics in itself, or mere or pure mathematics, they study mathematics, the final goal is mathematics, working with numbers, and the subject of that is numbers. But the second type of mathematics uh, is the, the, the rules that we gain and through them, and we use these rules in other sciences, for example, in physics, in chemistry. When we study chemistry, for example, we have some uh, the relations between different matters and the things that we have there, equations that we have there, for them we need numbers. We need working, knowing how to work with numbers. Okay, so mathematics in comparison to chemistry or physics is kind of instrumental science, introductory science. You should know it, then you can understand chemistry better, understand physics better. better. Okay, so this is the meaning of 
instrumental science or instru instrumental uh, knowledge. The same story happens to logics. I mean, logics, logic is very important because it is, it is the, the uh, instrument, the introduction, the prerequisite for many sciences. I mean, when you are studying philosophy, you should know logic because there are arguments there. When you are studying, for example, algebra, for example, you need logics. You know why? Because in many cases you need to have uh, deductions and inductions and these are some logical things. In, uh, in jurisprudence, in principles of jurisprudence, I mean, fiqh and in usul of fiqh, you need logics because you have arguments, you have reasonings. In reasonings, we need logics. Uh, even about speaking in debates, you need logics because when you are debating with someone, you should have some prerequisites, some things that in common when you debate, you come and you discuss, you debate based on them. When you deliver, an spe uh, deliver a speech, you need logics. Why? Because you're speaking to an audience that they speak in a special language, they think, and you are going to deliver them a, 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 a thing, induce them a, a thing, an idea, and it should be through logics. It should be logical to be accepted. So you see that logics is very important. In all the sciences, you need thinking. And to have a correct thinking, you need something, a, an instrument, a tool to uh, avoid you, to prevent you from making mistakes and errors. And what is that thing? That thing is logic. And the science of logic that we are going to go through it through the course that we have ahead of us. And that is the, so the first word. I told you in definition, in definition of logics, آلتون قانونيتون تأسم مراعاة هذهنا عن الخطأ في الفكر. The first word, a canonical tool. Tool. What is tool? I explained to you that logic is an instrument, is a prerequisite is kind of introduction to other sciences. And that is the first point. The second point is uh, the other word canonical or qanuniya. Canonical refers to the Syriac word qanun uh, or canon. Uh, and it means rules. I mean, canon itself in its original language, which is Syriac, I think, uh, means ruler. And you know that ruler that we use for drawing things, drawing lines. Ruler is canon. Canon uh, uh, is consists of rules and laws that you need in somewhere. About, for example, some religious things, we have canon. Canon of the church, for example. Canon means the, 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 the rules that should be observed. Uh, that is the meaning of canon. Uh, so here, logic gives us rules and laws that if we observe them, then our thinking, our mind will be prevented, will be uh, abstained from mistakes, from errors. So it is canon, a canonical thing, canonical tool. The third point in the definition, a canonical tool, which if one takes heed of, if one observes it. So this is very important and I explained it in that question that has been raised before, the objection that's raised before and I answered it. Uh, you should take heed of, you should observe the rules, then this observation will help you with not making mistake in your thinking. Okay? It doesn't stop errors unless you observe it. 
So checks hid and understand the secret in, in it just as we have already described it. It is not that every person who studies logic is immunized from error in his thoughts, just as everyone who studies grammar and morphology is not immunized from error on his tongue. Rather, one must take heed of and observe the principles and its uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, rulings, rules when needed. By this, a person will be immunized his mind, a person will immunize his mind and his tongue from error. So, the second, the third important point is that you should observe it. If you don't observe it, you, I mean, uh, how, how do you want to stop yourself from thinking from making mistakes and errors? The last point here is about mind and thinking. What is the different uh, the, 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 the definition of thinking, the definition of mind? It is very important and it is a vast uh, issue, a vast subject uh, that it needs uh, a, a more comprehensive discussion and we will have it inshallah in detail in near future. But again, I repeat it uh, as a as conclusion of this lesson today. So first, I told you that uh, uh, we have two types of notq, two ty uh, types of speech, external one and in internal one. The, the external one, which is speaking, uh, the ability to speak, and we have some sciences, some instrumental sciences that help uh, us to uh, avoid uh, making mistakes, like morphology, grammar, syntax. The second one is interior one, inward one, inward, uh, not inward uh, uh, faculty that it helps us uh, percept and understand the, the, gener the general rules, the, the, the universal, and that is logic. So, I mean, logic talk about it, and that is thinking. I mean, in thinking uh, to, uh, to keep ourselves uh, uh, abstained from, the, from mistakes, from errors, we need something, a, a, a tool, and that tool is logic. In definition, uh, uh, after that, uh, uh, we talked about that question that was raised that I study logic, but I, I still make mistakes in my thinking. And I told you that that is because of some reasons. Uh, for, uh, the first one was I mean, this, the same question uh, rises about the, the, the morpho morphology and syntax, I mean, grammar. The second point was that, uh, that there are three causes that could make this problem. First of all, I'm not you know, proficient enough. In logic. Second, uh, it is not, uh, I don't care, I, uh, I am careless about it, I'm heedless about it, I don't think about it. And the, the last point was that I make mistakes and errors in applying those rules, those logical rules. And the last point here was about the definition of logics, with, which was canonical tool which if one takes heed of this, uh, he will have his mind and thinking immunized from error. We discussed it four words, tool, two types of uh, sciences, asali and ali sciences, and then the word canonical, that logic gives us some rules and laws. And uh, the, the third point was that uh, a person should uh, think about logic when, when he's thinking, he should observe the rules. And the last point was that uh, the logic uh, talks about mind and thinking. And uh, it is its domain of work and operation. Uh, the, the, the territory of operation of logic is mind and thinking. This was the first lesson that uh, today we, uh, I, I delivered here. And I hope that uh, it was useful for you. Inshallah, in future, in the, the, the coming sessions, we will discuss uh, other issues about logics. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. And uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> وعجل فرجه <تصفيق>